Um, so today what I thought I'd do is just take you through a bit of the journey that we've been on with the Collins family over the past five years um, and where we've come to with that and what the future of Brahmin cattle breeding and the future of cattle breeding in this country might look like as a result of that. So, uh, basics. The reason we work with the Collins family so closely and have done so over the last five years is a pretty selfish reason really. They're great to work with of course, but uh, their data collection is just fantastic. And they're recording on their cattle of pregnancy, of weights, um, lifetime productivity, so how many cow calves a cow will have over its lifetime and so on is just absolutely first rate. And it's quite hard to find that level of data recording um, in, in beef cattle herds. So it's just a wonderful resource for us. And in fact, that data recording is what really drives uh, the genomic information that I work with. So in my day-to-day -day job, I see a lot of A, C, Ts and Gs. So sites across the cattle genome that are different between animals. If I just see that information, I can't do very much with it. What I have to do with that is to tie it up to how the cattle are actually performing. So look to see, are cows that live a very long time and have a calf year after year, do they have a, a certain gene at one point and the, the heifers that just fall out really quickly because they don't get pregnant, do they have a different gene? So that's basically the work I do. And without that really good data recording, you just can't mine into the genomics, into those A, C, Ts and Gs and make anything of it. So for us to work with a herd like this, or multiple herds actually, that has such good data is fantastic. So now, what have we actually done with that information? So what we've done is we've taken ALF and Vix and Lara's um, and Gemma's records from over the years. We've got those, all those cows are uh, genotyped for DNA markers. So they have a scan of their genome, lots of ACTs and Gs. And then we've lined all that information up with um, the important traits. So what we can do now as a result of that is predict some pretty important, well, you can tell me if they're important, we think they're important, but Lara's been using them and Alpha and so on, so I hope they are important. Some pretty important traits for fertility. So the, the main trait that people are using in beef cattle breeding for fertility is days to calving. So when the bull goes in to when the cow um, calves. So if you've seen breed plan EBVs, the fertility trait for cows is that days to calving. It's a fantastic trait, works really well. And as Alpha's demonstrated in spades, if you select for that trait year after year, consistently, you end up with a, a highly fertile herd. And so it works. What we're trying to do is put extra information into the system so that ALF and the Collins crew can go even faster. So what we've turned ALF's information into is traits like stayability. So where by the time a cow's five or six, will she have had three calves or not? And is she actually going to stay in the herd? So getting close to lifetime productivity. And that's a bit extra information on top of that days to calving. Days to calving gives you a good handle on fertility. A trait like stayability gives you just that little bit more. And the beauty of it is, I think, is if you run it off that DNA marker information, you can get that when the animal's a calf. So you just pull the tail hair, send it down to the lab, Neogen or Pfizer or whatever, um, and we can turn that data 
into a prediction of how long that animal, that um, heifer calf, is going to stay in the herd and how many calves she's going to have over her lifetime. So it's, I think it's reasonably useful. It's not 100% accurate by any means. There's still variation in that, but it's a lot better than having none of that information. So that's one thing we've done for ALF. Um, the other interesting trait that is worth <coughs> looking at, I think, based on what we've done here, is weeks pregnant. So if you can get a vet to start recording um, fetal age, when they do the pregnancy diagnosis, that trait we're finding, that week's pregnant, is really a good indicator of how many calves a cow will have over its lifetime and whether it will calf consistently each year. It's a, a trait you can get on your heifers and it really does a good job of that. The numbers show it's about 80% uh, correlated with that lifetime number of um, calves. So it's a, it's a nice trait that you can get early in the animal's life. We've also turned that trait into a DNA marker prediction. So you can get it on your baby calves and predict when you do the pregnancy diagnosis, how many weeks pregnant is she going to be? So obviously the more weeks pregnant it is, she is the earlier she's cycled, earlier she's conceived, the earlier she'll have a calf, the more likely she is to rebreed the following year. So I guess the message is, if you have the possibility of recording that week's pregnant, it's really a good trait to set yourselves up and then you can layer the DNA information on top of that. So now we've got a couple of extra fertility traits that we can add together with days to carving to really hone in on those highly fertile animals that are really going to perform and give us a calf year after year. So that's the practical side of what we've done. That took four years, very quick to say, but it took a bit of time to put all that together. And it was all enabled just to reinforce by the great records that were kept here and at the other collaborating properties. Now I'm going to take a little bit of a different tack and tell you something that's not maybe quite so practical but is very interesting. So along that journey we've also dissected out the genes that affect fertility. So our genome, just like our cattle genome, it's broken up into genes that um, do certain jobs. We've honed in on the genes that really affect um, cow fertility. And we've discovered about four or five of these that we can really hang our hat on, publish papers on, and say this gene really does affect cow fertility because multiple data sets tell us this gene's important. But I just want to tell you a, a, a bit about one of those genes. And it's called PLAG1. Um, its name doesn't really mean anything. It was actually discovered for cancer, but it affects cow fertility as well. It turns out there's a, a good version of this gene and that version means if your animals carry it, it means they go through puberty earlier and they get in calf, particularly when they're a heifer, more easily. If they've got the bad version of the gene, they uh, get pregnant later, they go through puberty later, they get pregnant later and they're less likely to have the first rebreed as well, successful rebreed. And you can almost, the gene has a, a fairly reasonable effect, you can almost see it. The tall skinny cows that you see, so very tall, very skinny, they're likely to be the ones carrying this bad version of the gene. So go through puberty later, um, get pregnant later and so on. The, the smaller ones that have a bit better condition, um, they're likely to have the good version of the gene. A little bit out of interest, um, the good version of the gene, uh, people say Brahmin cattle are, are poorer than Bostaurus cattle for fertility. The weird thing is the good version of this gene actually comes from Brahmins, 
the bad version actually comes from Bos Taurus. And we think what happened was when people were building the Brahmin breed, some people selected for very big, sort of tall cattle, and that dragged in this bad gene from Bos Taurus, unfortunately. The good news is, uh, people like Alf and others that have been selecting for fertility, they're slowly eliminating this, the bad version. So in this herd, which is probably leading the country in this respect, um, it has about 50% of each version of the gene. And you can really see it too, if you, if you group the cattle into those that um, cycle early, are in speed band one in Alf's terminology, uh, they carry a lot more of this good, good gene. Okay, I do have to be careful and say this is just one part of the story. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of genes affecting fertility, but this is one we now can understand and we know what it does. The other interesting thing about that gene is we now know when it's turned on and off. And this is really interesting. This is through work that was done here where we collected blood samples from animals and we could see what genes were switched on and off in those blood samples. This plague one gene, it isn't expressed in adult animals at all. It's just expressed at the embryo and fetus stage. So in other words, the action of this particular gene to make the cattle more fertile, uh, more likely to uh, conceive and have better lifetime productivity, it's all set up in the fetus. After that, it just gets switched off. So it, it determines for the fetus the energy that goes to reproductive capacity, reproductive organs, compared to growth. So if you've got the tall skinny gene, it shunts all the energy into making that fetus, sets the fetus up for a lot of growth and being tall, but poorer fertility. Whereas the good version sets the animal up for being more fertile. So yeah, it's just a, an illustration of if we have these powerful data sets, what we can start to pull apart. And now we know about that gene, we can include it and we do include it in our um, DNA marker predictions, our EBVs um, for fertility. So if you buy things like the Neogen um, SNP chip test, that gene is now on that array. So it's automatically included in there. So it's already sort of translated into what you can get. Uh, I, that's uh, what I've really got to tell you today. Uh, and just to reinforce, it was all possible with this really good data set. If you do have the opportunity to record something like weeks pregnant, we are finding that's a really good trait to set you up. And in the future, you'll hear more and more about this dissection of fertility. The genes that we find will end up on the DNA marker chips to give you better breeding values so you get more accurate selection decisions. So, I'll leave it there and open it up if there are any questions. Thank <laughs> you.